Ugh. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Hey, come back to another video. As promised, here's the continuation of my Mega Faith Numbers video. Playlists and everything can be found down there in the description. And we are going to implement the most efficient algorithm I have programmed myself um, and that I was able to find here in Python. Uh, it's going to take quite a while, but we are going to dive right in. So at first, let us recall what we have said in the last video. At first, we are going to get ourselves a primality test. So we want to see if numbers are prime because we want to get ourselves a list of the first digits. Then we are going to append all the other possible digits to it, one after another. Check if each and every one of those are prime. And we're going to continue this process up until we get rid of all the combinations and up until we get all the primes out that they are possibly truncatable, right truncatable. And this is how it's going to go. Our program is going to spit out on the one hand the biggest right truncatable prime there is and also the list of all the other possible right truncatable primes. We're going to dive right in. I hope you're going to enjoy this video. Whew. All right, as always, I obviously imported the whole math library and now we are going to go ahead and define ourselves a primality test, which is just there to copy paste it later. So we are going to define ourselves a PT, a primality test, and it's going to be with respect to a single variable number that we are going to plug in. And basically it's just a CF, but it's a more efficient CF a prime number CF because we are just going to go up into the square root of n. This is called the square root test in elementary number theory. Basically, we just need to check all the factors or all the numbers up until the square root of the number if they divide our number and if it is not the case then it's going to be a prime number this is just how it works and obviously it needs to be an integer or square root of the number n meaning we want to take the floor of the square root so as an example if you want to check if the number 16 is a prime number then we are going to take the square root of 16 which is going to be 4 we are going to check all the numbers starting from 2 because 1 it really doesn't matter starting from 2 up until 4 if they divide our 16 and if any of those divides our 16 then it's not going to be a um, a prime number. So 2 divides 16 does it's not a prime number. So just as a little example. So what we are basically going to do is we are going to check all the i's. We are going to take a running index. We are going to do a loop here um, in a certain range and the range is going to be from the first prime number 2 up until um, the floor. So math.floor of our square root. So math.square root of our number x. Okay, this is what we are going to check out. And now we have two cases, either our um, i divides our x. So if x is zero modulo i, then, well, we are going to break our loop just because it's not a prime number then. But the other case is going to be, if it's not going to de uh, be divisible by any i up until our square root of n, our floor square root of n, then basically um, we are going to return our number. Okay, this is what we are going to do. We are going to return our x. Meaning overall, if we were to try this out, so we are going to take a is an integer input, is an integer input, then we are going to um, print our pt of a. Okay, that's what we are going to try out. 13 is a prime number, it gets printed, but what about 16? It's not a prime number, so nothing is going to happen. Next up is the part where we are going to write our main script, our main algorithm. I'm still going to make a function out of it, because why the hell not? Functions are always cool. So we are going to define um, trunk, I don't know, truncatable, and it's going to be, be with respect to x. Um, we really don't put any number in there later in the game. You can just copy paste the code that, that's in there and put it underneath, but I still like to define functions to try everything out at first. So remember what we wanted to do. At first, we needed the first digit of everything. So we need, um, I'm going to call it first. This is our first list that we are going to implement, and it's going to have the digits um, 2, that's a prime number. Then we are going to have the digit 3, that's a prime number. Then we are going to have 5, that's a prime number. And then we are going to have 7. Okay, this is the first list. Then we need a list where we are going to put all the, um, all the prime numbers in that are going to come. So those are, the all, uh, those are all the filtered out prime numbers that we want to have, all the right truncatable primes. So I'm going to call it, um, so let's say t list 
And this is the new T-list. So after putting all the truncated primes into there, this is going to be the list, spitting everything out. Two, three, five, and seven are trivially all, uh, already truncatable primes. By definition, right truncatable primes, and this is why we are going to leave them in there. And also we need like an append list. Um, this is the append list. And the append list consists of all our um, primes that we are going to append to it, or in, not the primes, all the numbers that we are going to append to the prime numbers one after another. So those were one, three, um, and then we had seven, and then we had nine. Um, overall, everything is going to run over a while loop. This is what I did, meaning we are going to run through everything, through all the combinations up until a certain trigger is being set to false. So at first we are going to say we have a trigger and we are going to set this value to true. And while our trigger is equal to true, we want to let our loop run all the time. This is what I thought here. And right after we jump into our while loop, we are going to set the trigger to false. And at some point we are going to have a list and the biggest uh, the, the list of all the truncatable prime numbers and the biggest truncatable prime number. And once this happened, we are going to set our trigger to false after everything is done and then we are out of the loop basically. Okay, here's the next thought that I want to implement. Um, our list first that we are having. We are going to run through this whole list and get out all the um, possible combinations, check if they are prime, etc. We are going to add all of those prime numbers that we have filtered out to be right truncated prime numbers to the list first. But after that we want to run through the whole loop again. Problem here is if we were to do that, we would um, actually try out two, three, five, and seven again. That would be highly inefficient. So what we are going to do is we are going to remove all the elements we had in before we had um, applied the appendation to it. We are going to remove those from the list yet again. So we are going to get ourselves a certain length and we are going to define it as the length of our um, first list. Okay, this is basically just there to ensure that at the start of the at the start of our um, while loop, once again, we get ourselves those four elements and then we can remove all of those four. And if in the next um, part of the loop, in, uh, we, we get six elements in the first list, basically, we are going to in ensure that we are going to save our six as the length of, those, uh, of this first list and that we can remove the first six elements then. Now we are going to go ahead and go through all the combinations basically and check if they are prime. Meaning we are going to start off with a running index for i in range, okay, and what is the range we are going to go over? Our range is going to start at zero, this is the start of the list, so like the zero of entry in the list. And we are going to go up until the length of a certain list. What is this certain list going to be? Well, obviously our first list, because we are going to take two, three, seven, and five, and we are going to append stuff to it. So we are going to go up until the length of our first list. And from this point onwards, we are going to go over all the entries in our append list, basically. So for J in range, and this range is going to be from zero to the length of our um, append list. Now imagine we are going to go through the first iteration. We are going to say we take two and then this is the zero of entry and then one. Okay, this is what we are going to have. This is going to give us 21. This is going to be our candidate for the prime number. Meaning what we are basically going to do is we are going to say, okay, we, we have some prime candidate. We, we don't know if it's prime yet. And this one is going to consist of, okay, we are going to make a string out of that basically at first and we are going to convert it into an integer. So this is just an integer of, okay, let me see now, we are going to take the i-th entry of our first list, so first of i, and we are going to add as a string our first entry or our zeroth entry of the append list to it, meaning it's our jth entry. Really depends on where we are in the loop right now. So we are going to take the append list and add the position j. And now we are going to check if this thing is actually prime. So we are going to copy and paste this. And now we need to change from i to t for example. Now we are going to check if it's prime. If it's not prime, then we are not going to do anything. It's going to break just like before. But 
If it is prime, then we need to append it to our tlist new and we need to start our cycle over again. So we are going to say our truncation list new, so trunk list new. We are going to append our element to it because this is one of the possible truncatable prime numbers that we are seeking. We are going to append our prime cant to it. And also what you want to do is this is one of the primes that we are going to make into a possibility of being a new right truncatable prime after appending new elements to it. Meaning what we need to do, we need to append this to our first list, okay? So first dot append our prime candidate. And now we are at the point where we are generating prime numbers one after another. This is basically what we are doing here. But we also, like I said before, need to remove um, all the elements that we have already used from the first list every time. So meaning what we are going to do for, it doesn't matter for i, this is completely out of our loop that we originally had, for i in range. And this is why we have saved our length before from zero to length. We are going to say we are going to remove this very element from the first spot. So what we are going to do is we are going to say trunk list dot pop and always at the zero place. So hear me out. So what is going to happen is we are going to run over four iterations a small loop and it's going to remove always the zero element from it. Meaning what is going to happen in the zero iteration we are going to remove two. Then everything is going to go from those three numbers that we have left onto the zero first and second spot. Then we are going to run the cycle again. We are going to remove the three. It's going to shift. Then we are going to remove the zero element again and so on up until our list is cleared out. And also we want to run our loop again. Meaning we are going to say trigger at this point is going to be true. Okay, we already came pretty far but there's one problem left. Our um, loop is going to run endlessly because we do not yet have put a stop to this um, loop at all. So meaning how can we stop this loop most efficiently? Well, it's going to stop if we don't have any prime numbers anymore in our first list that we can append numbers to because if this list is empty, well, basically we have gone through all the combinations that possibly are there. So what we are going to do, we are going to say if our length of our first list is equal to zero and this is only going to happen if we pop out all the elements one after another and there are no other combinations left then we are going to say well we have found the biggest prime number in some way the, the biggest right truncatable prime this is the message that we want to get out of this whole thing but the most important thing is that we are going to set our trigger to be false okay this is um, how we are going to end our loop overall. So trigger is going to be set to false there and now we can add all the other conditions that I just talked about. Meaning we are going to say well our biggest prime number is that, here's the list of all the right truncatable primes and so on. Meaning what is our biggest prime number? Our biggest prime number that we are going to have is going to be at the very end of our um, T list new basically of the list of all the right truncatable primes basically. So what we have is that this is just um, a trunk list new, no, a T list new, I'm terribly sorry, the, the T stands for trunk, <laughs> T list new, and it's going to be at the spot, well, the length of our T list new, and minus one. Okay, if we just choose the length, then that is not uh, happening. Then we would get a string index out of range in the normal case. And our trigger has been set to false. Also, we can print something. So let's say we are going to print um, the biggest right truncatable prime is, and this is going to be our biggest. And then we are going to have a little placeholder in here. And we are going to say The list of all right truncatable primes is, and what we are going to do, we are going to print our um, our T list new, obviously. Oh yeah, I was being stupid there. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Since we have a function right here, we, we are going to make use of it. Um, it's just going to be spit out as a little return right here. So we are going to return our T list new overall. 
Exactly, and I hope this is going to work. Um, that's just going to be a silly thing right here. You wanna run? Do you know the way? And now we are going to put a little placeholder in here, so why the hell not? And we are going to print, what are we going to print exactly? Namely, a trunk of X. Really doesn't matter. <sighs> okay, I hope the debugging is done. We are going to try everything out. You want to run? Yes, there we go. So we got this. Hey, nice. Um, this is good, right? I mean, we have um, found out all the right truncatable prime numbers. You can find them in the list here. And obviously my most favorite mega faith number is in here. 73,939,133. And also it would be possible to get yourself um, also the, the number of right truncatable primes here. Uh, I'm leaving this up as an exercise to the reader. You just basically need to print the length of your list that you are having here. So this is basically all that you need to do. And I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this different kind of video, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also subscribe to Flamble Maps too. Yada, 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 that's say. And up until next video, I wish you guys a Flamble Day. Um, there's probably going to come out another episode tomorrow. And yeah, have a great one. Ciao.